All right, guys, so Business Insider made this really stupid video on hydrogen. Most of you probably laughed at it, but for the people who don't know about this stuff, let's go through it and figure out what's wrong. If you ask anyone what the future of cars looks like, they'll probably tell you, it's electric, and that Tesla is at the forefront of the movement. Yeah, if you asked uh, anyone, that's probably what anyone would tell you because it is true. But what if I told you that there's another option that could be just as good or even better than battery electric vehicles? What if you could power cars with the most abundant resource in the universe? This is the classic bullshit line about hydrogen. Oh, it's the most abundant element in the universe. If you hear someone say this, it's usually a pretty good sign that they're completely full of shit. Where is all this abundant hydrogen? There is no hydrogen for you to go collect anywhere on Earth. Hydrogen has to be produced, and it's usually produced from fossil fuels, like natural gas. You can produce hydrogen from water using electricity, but at that point you're already burning electricity to make the hydrogen. That's why it's better to think of hydrogen fuel cell technology as more of an energy storage mechanism than a fuel source. In other words, it's more like batteries than something like petroleum that's just in the ground. So if you're going to waste electricity, why not just use it to charge the battery of an electric vehicle rather than making hydrogen and then converting that into electricity in the car, which is a lot less efficient. The bullshit line is that hydrogen is so abundant, but in reality, you need electricity to make hydrogen fuel. So by definition, hydrogen is less abundant than electricity because you need electricity to make it. That's why you're gonna find a lot more power outlets than hydrogen stations. With water as the only byproduct. Great, cars pissing all over the road, sounds awesome. And they're more likely to disrupt the auto industry than battery powered cars like Tesla's. Hydrogen fuel cells have been a technology of great promise, as well as great skepticism. Elon Musk himself often mocks hydrogen fuel cell technology, going so far as to call them fool cells and mind-bogglingly stupid. Ah, what does he know? That guy's an idiot. But major automakers still see promise. Yeah, who knows more about technology than legacy auto? First, let's define the terms. Battery electric vehicles, or BEVs, are the electric vehicles that most of us are familiar with today, like Tesla's. They use a battery to store electricity and power the electric motor. A hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle, or FCEV, like Toyota's Mirai, combines hydrogen with oxygen to produce electricity, which then powers the electric motor that drives the car. Now, when it comes to why people don't buy battery electric vehicles like Tesla's, actually, they do buy them. In many places, electric vehicles are now the best-selling vehicles of any kind. There are three main reasons. They take too long to recharge. V3 superchargers at 100 miles of range in five minutes. They have a limited range before they need to be recharged. The Tesla Model S now has over 400 miles of range. And they cost a lot more than your comparable gas-powered car. Model 3 and Y are already lower priced than similarly equipped luxury gas-powered vehicles and the total cost of ownership is less than a Toyota Camry when you factor in fuel savings and maintenance. So, how do hydrogen cars stack up in these areas? When it comes to recharging, hydrogen cars have battery electrics beat. At a supercharging station, a Tesla can charge anywhere from 30% to 50% in 15 minutes, but you'll be at the charging station for over an hour for a full charge. Out of date info. These days, a supercharging stop at V3 isn't going to take you more than 30 minute stops. Fuel cell vehicles don't require charging at all. The hydrogen tank is refilled at a hydrogen station in less than 5 minutes. Yeah, if you can find a hydrogen station, which you can't because there aren't any. So if it takes 5 minutes to fill up, but it takes an hour to drive there, you're not really saving any time, are you? Just like your typical gas station today. Yep, just like a gas station. This is why so many people are pushing hydrogen. It preserves the existing fossil fuel supply chain. Meanwhile, with electricity, 
You can just charge at home with solar panels generated at home and cut out the oil companies completely. Hydrogen is their last hope. That's because FCEVs don't store electricity like a battery. They create it on demand to power the motor. When it comes to range, hydrogen powered cars seem to come out on top again. Between the three fuel cell vehicles on the road today, they have a range of 312, 360, and 380 miles. Most electric vehicles have a range under 250 miles. While some Tesla models offer a range of more than 300 miles, they often cost more than the average car buyer can afford. Range and refueling times are so important that 78% of automotive executives believe fuel cell vehicles will be the breakthrough for electric mobility. But that's not to say fuel cell vehicles don't have challenges of their own. FCEVs need more competitive pricing. The suggested retail price for the fuel cell vehicles available today is around $60,000, which is about $20,000 more than an entry-level BEV. I didn't even have to debunk that part because they did it for me. They've spent the whole video talking about how electric vehicles were so expensive, but the truth is Model 3 starts at $35,000 and Toyota Mirai starts at $60,000. Hydrogen is actually $25,000 more than electric. That's because production size of these vehicles is incredibly low. With only a few thousand or a few hundred being made every year, it's nearly impossible for prices to be competitive. But that could soon be changing. Automakers are looking to increase the production of their FCEVs. Toyota in particular has increased its production capabilities tenfold to eventually bring down the cost of its Mirai. The real challenge for hydrogen fuel cells is the lack of infrastructure. In the US, the majority of hydrogen stations are in California, with just over 40 available to fuel cell owners. This is the beautiful thing about electric vehicles. They can use the existing electric utility infrastructure that's already in place. If you get an electric vehicle and you don't have an EV charging station nearby, you can just take it to your house, plug it into any old outlet that you would use to charge anything else. It just works. If you have a hydrogen vehicle and there's no hydrogen station nearby wherever you are, well, then you're stuck with a $60,000 paperweight. For FCEVs to become the breakthrough that automotive executives believe in, a vast network for hydrogen stations is vital, and automakers are slowly working to make it happen. We do get to work together with the other automakers, as well as with, you know, here in California, the state of California and the um, industrial gas suppliers or whomever the energy provider is. Yes, industrial gas suppliers. She's talking about hydrogen made from fossil fuels and then transported on a truck, which is refrigerated and also produces emissions. This hydrogen is fossil fuel energy. To be able to site hydrogen stations where it makes the most sense for all of the automakers' vehicles. And so that's to try to make sure that any investment that we make is um, best leveraged by all of the consumers from all of the automakers that currently offer fuel cell vehicles. If and when fuel cell vehicles scale, mainly if, Tesla will have a tough challenge on their hands. They'll have to increase range while simultaneously decreasing recharging time and price. That's already what they're doing, and it doesn't have anything to do with the threat of hydrogen. But Teslas, and any battery electric vehicles, are limited because of the law of diminishing returns. Increasing the range requires a larger battery. Actually, the new Model S hit 400 miles without changing the battery at all. Same capacity, same pack design. A larger battery will add more weight to the car. Actually, battery cell energy densities have almost tripled since 2010, and they continue to increase. That means more capacity with less weight. After a certain point, the added weight no longer yields additional range. With FCEVs, it's just a numbers game. More hydrogen stations equal more cars, and more cars equal more affordable fuel cell vehicles. Tesla has a lock on the zero emissions market in America, controlling a whopping 60% of the EV market. But that's still only 2% of the entire U.S. car market. And those numbers decrease when we talk about the global car market. The only thing really holding FCEVs back is infrastructure. And as hydrogen stations become more abundant, Tesla could lose the majority of the zero emissions market. For a technology that's mind-bogglingly stupid, 
it has serious potential to become a real competition for the very same customers that Tesla's aiming for. So, Elon might want to take notice. All right, so that was really stupid. To end this video, I wanted to read you a real life story from Facebook of someone who bought the Toyota Mirai and basically had their life ruined after a hydrogen fuel shortage. So they would go to the hydrogen station and there was just no fuel. No one could get any fuel because there was a shortage and no one had any hydrogen. So let's read the story. I bought my Mirai Labor Day 2017 to drive Lyft in the Bay Area, put $22,000 in the first year, and today it's worth $25,000 because of fuel issues. I am now paying $574 a month to park. I asked the dealership, Sunnyvale, to help me out and put me into something I could drive, but they didn't want the Mirai back, and the used ones on their lot were going for 20 k My 60 k car was worth 20 k so I called Toyota and got sent to a team that sent me to another team that told me to talk to the dealership. So I tried a different one in Roseville, and this one sounds promising. Salesman heard my story, was very apathetic, and he said he would get me into a new car. Well, no. After I drove from San Ramon to Roseville, where there was no fuel, the dealership was not going to swap my lease, and I would still have to pay for the Mirai and the new car as well. I could not get home, so I had to park it in Grass Valley at my dad's. This loss of income has really set me back, and we can no longer afford to live in East Bay. I had to move to Texas while my wife stays with friends in California because of her job. This is so wrong. I was a Toyota guy for 20 years, two Camrys, Prius Prime Advanced, and then Mirai. My mom and dad both have a Prius, and they said they will not buy from Toyota again if this is not dealt with. This is what hydrogen is like in the real world. A family literally broken up. They don't live together anymore, they live in different states. All because of hydrogen fuel cell technology and the fact that they couldn't get any hydrogen fuel. Don't believe this bullshit. The only reason people are promoting hydrogen is to hold back the transition to electric vehicles. Don't commit to electric vehicles. Look, there's this other thing, it could be better. Let's try both. Let's do hydrogen. No. There is no purpose for hydrogen except to preserve the existing supply chain of the fossil fuel economy, to give the oil company something to do, rather than transition us to a future where we don't need energy companies. With electric vehicles, you can generate your own power on your roof, charge your own car, and never have to worry about dealing with an energy company. And that is why they're promoting hydrogen. Spread the word. Hydrogen cars are for morons.